In today's video, I'm going to show you the 10 most powerful functions or formulas here in Google Sheets. And we're going to start off with the sum function. The sum function returns the sum of a series of numbers or cells. In our example data set right here, I want to get the total of this column right here and also this column right here. We can quickly do that with the sum function. We have our syntax or our formula right here. Start with your equal sign, type in sum, open parentheses, then select your range. Press enter, and there you have it. We're going to do that again. Equal sign, sum, and now you have a suggested formula which pre selects the data that you have above that function. If we press on tab on our keyboard, there we have it. We have the sum of both columns right here. We have our budget and our box office revenue. Now let's say we want to get a total of this two. We can also do our total horizontally. So equal sum, select your range right here and press enter. Other than that, you can also do the same thing by just selecting the range like this one, comma, and the next one, press enter, and it will give you the same results. And that's for our first powerful function. Our next one would be the concatenate function. Now the concatenate function joins strings to one another. So let's say in our example right here, we want to join this text to this text. We can quickly do that again with our concatenate function. Here is our syntax, our formula. Start with the equal sign, type in con, select concatenate right here. We have our first string comma and our next string but as you see our text or our strings are connected to each other without a space now if you want to add a space you can go back to this one right here instead of just joining it like that we can add a space that's quotation marks space quotation marks comma and press enter and now we have joined our text with an additional space in between if we drag that down there we have it. We've successfully joined our text with a space in between with a quick function called concatenate. Next function would be our unique function. Now the unique function returns unique rows in the provided source range disregarding duplicates. So what I want to do in my data set right here is I want to know how many products are actually being sold in this range. Now I'm not really sure and I'll be able to find out with a unique function. So let's go ahead and do that. Start with your equal sign. We have our syntax or our formula right here. Again, start with your equal sign. Type in unique or select it right here. And now we're going to select our range. So this would be from this range right here. If we press enter, there we have it. It has given us four unique values. And these are the camera lens, the memory card, the camera bag, and the tripod. So in total, we have four unique values from this range right here. And that's for our unique function. Our fourth function would be the count function. Now the count function returns the number of numeric values in a data set. So in my example set right here, I want to know the number of quantities that were sold in this range. Now you'll see not all of these values are numerical. Some of them are in text form. Now, if we use the count function, it will be able to just count all the quantities that are in numbers and not in text. So that's what I want to do. I want to count all of the quantities that were sold. So let's start our function or our formula right here. Put in your equal sign type in count and select your values. Now it has a suggestion of which range we want to count. If we select that, there we have it. We have a total of 51 quantities that were sold in this data set, not counting these text strings right here. So we have 56 in total, but only 51 were counted because again, the count function only counts numerical values. And now for our next formula, we have the average function. For this one, 
it returns the numerical average value in a data set, again the same with our count function, ignoring the text. In my example here, I want to get the average of the quantity, the price, and the total purchase. We'll just start with our equal sign. We have our syntax or our formula right here. Let's type an average. There we go. And our value, which is this range right here. If we press enter, there we have it. We have an average of 171 for all the quantities included on this range right here. If we drag our formula to the right, it will give us the same average for this range right here. If I double click on it, you'll see the range that has been selected. And the next one would be the same. Now, if I try and get the average of the total data set, let's just type in average again. There we go. We can select it from the choices and select this range and press enter. It will give us the average of, again, just numerical values in the selected range. And there you have it. That's for the average function. Let's go to the next one. For the next one, we have our import range. Our import range imports a range of cells from a specified spreadsheet. Now, if the spreadsheet that you're trying to import has different sheets in it, you'll have to specify which sheet from that spreadsheet you want to import. So let's go ahead and do that. I have my URL right here. So instead of putting in the entire URL, I'm just going to link to that cell. We can definitely do that. So let's start with our formula equal sign. Again, our syntax and formula right here. Type in import. Select import range right here. There you have it. Here is our URL then comma now let me just open that sample data right here where i'm going to be importing maybe this sheet from this spreadsheet now i've already copied the url i'm just going to specify from which sheet from this spreadsheet so again this is form number two sheet let's type that in in quotations so that's form space two exclamation point and our range would be from A1 to E9. So that's A1 to E9. Closing quotation marks and press enter. And there we have it. We've imported a range from a specific sheet from a totally different spreadsheet. So that's your import range. Now for our next formula or for our next function, I'm going to be using the same data set we have on our import range sheet in our array formula function. Now this function enables the values returned from an array formula into multiple rows or columns and the use of non array functions with arrays. So the function that we're going to be putting in our array formula would be a simple mathematical operator because what I want to do is to get the total purchase from these customers right here without just copying this one right here. So what I'm going to do is to multiply the quantity, this range, to this range to have the results on this range right here. And I'm going to be using the array formula. So let's start with our equal sign, type in array, select array formula right here. Now we're going to the import range sheet to select our quantity times our price and if we go back to our array formula sheet and press enter there we have our total purchase for each customer and if we make a comparison it's going to give us the same results and that was our array formula let's move on to our next function that will be the vlookup function or the vertical lookup function now this function searches down for the first column of a range for a key and returns the value of a specified cell in the row found. So in this example, I have the customer ID and I want it to return the specific information using the VLOOKUP function. We can definitely do that and we have our syntax right here, which will be our guide in creating our formula. So start with your equal sign, type in VLOOKUP or select it right here. Now for our search key, you can hard code this or you can just do a cell reference, which is right here. That's our search key, which is our customer ID, comma. Now for our range, and we're going to be selecting everything right here. 
Remember to not include your headers anymore. Those are not needed in this formula, comma. Next one would be our index. Now the index is the number of now the index is the number of the column from which you are searching your return value. Now your index always starts with the first column, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Our customer name is in column number two, so that's gonna be index two, comma. And if our data is sorted, that's gonna be false. Close parentheses and press enter, and there you have it. Now, if we're going to check, that's 10362. 10362 is Howard Stevens, and now it matches the results that we have from our data. Now, we're going to try and do that again with the next search key. Instead of dragging down the formula, what I'm going to do is to copy the entire formula, copy, then paste. Now, I'm going to change the index because, again, we're not looking at the customer name anymore. We're now looking for the product purchase. So that's going to be in one, two, three, the third column. So that's index number three. Press enter, and there you have it. We have the tripod. Same thing with our quantity. I'm just going to paste in again the same formula. Just edit the index number, four, press enter. There you have it. For the price, same thing. It's gonna be five. And the last one, paste. Change the index number to six. And there you have it. So now every time I change the customer ID, I'll be given the correct corresponding information below. And that's your VLOOKUP function. For our next function, we're using the same data that we had in our VLOOKUP function. So let's say we have our customer ID as a blank. Now we have the NA error appearing in all of our cells right here. This is because it did not find value in the VLOOKUP evaluation because our search key is at the moment empty. If you don't want to see these NA errors, a quick fix would be to use the if error function. Now to use the if error function, we're just going to add it at the beginning of our VLOOKUP function. So go ahead and just type in if error, open parentheses, go to the end of your formula, comma. So now we're just going to add the value that we want it to return if it does encounter the same error. What we're going to do is to put in a blank one so that's quotation, space, quotation, press enter, and there you have it. Now that it has an error, it's just returning us a blank. We're going to do the same thing with the rest of our formulas. Again, type an if error, go to the end, comma, put in your return value, which is just a space, and there you have it. And now let's just do it with the rest of our formulas. And there you have it. Even though we have an error right here, it's returning us a blank because that's what we're using with our if error function. But if we return, let's say, customer ID right here, there we have our return values that matches our customer ID. So last but not the least, we have our sparkline function. Our sparkline function creates a miniature chart contained within a single cell. So we can actually create mini charts inside our cells right here with the sparkline function. So let's start with the trend. Put in your equal sign, type in sparkline, select your data range and press enter. And there you have it. You have created a mini chart within your cell. If we drag this down, you'll have the representation of each data within that cell. Let's try another type of sparkline, and that's going to be with your chart type. Start with your equal sign again, type in sparkline or select it right here. We are going to select a range, comma, curly brackets, type in the chart type. So that's open quotation mark, chart type, closing quotations, comma, and now we are going to put in column. Again in quotations, closing curly brackets, closing parentheses, 
and press enter. And there you have it. Now we have our data represented in this column chart right here. Again, if we drag it down, there you have it. We have two different types of spark lines that represent our data right here. And you can easily change the color of these spark lines by changing the text color in the toolbar. So let's say we want it in red. And there you have it. Now, another type of spark line that we can do is a progress bar. Now, here's the formula for this one. So that's going to be again, equal sign, spark line, spark line. Select your first data, comma, curly brackets, again, chart type, closing quotations, comma, open quotation marks. This time we're going to put in bar, closing quotations, semicolon, open quotation. The max would be our second cell reference right here. Closing curly brackets closing parentheses and press enter. And there you have it. Now we have a representation of our data right here where 10 out of 40 has been progressed in this data. If we drag it down, here is a representation of the progress that we've made in this data set right here. Now, if you want to change the color of your progress bar, you can't easily change it by changing the text color right here it doesn't affect your progress bar. What we can do to change the color of our progress bar would be to edit our formula right here. So we're going to add in semicolon, open quotation marks. We have color one, closing quotation, comma, open quotation. Let's say we want the color green, closing quotation, and press enter. Now, if I drag this down, it will also change the color of the rest of our progress bar. And that's our 10th most powerful formula here in Google Sheets. If you have any other formulas in mind that didn't make our list, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, do leave a like and subscribe for more helpful videos. See you on the next one.